So y'all listen, when I tell you I watched this show and really felt like it captured what Ripley was trying to, if you guys are new here, my name is Ashley and this is My Sweet Perspective where I give my take on all things TV and movie related and I am back to talk about the brand new show, Sugar, which premiered on Apple TV and you guys... I'm hooked. I don't know if we are just in the season of noir aesthetic, noir tropes, but I'm here for it when it's done properly. And Sugar does it properly. Now, starring Colin Farrell, starring Old Girl from The Office, Michael Scott's girlfriend, Kirby. When I tell you it's star studded, it's star studded. And immediately, you guys, I love when a story develops the character uh, in such a way that you feel like you immediately know and connect with them. And that's exactly what Colin Farrell does with his character, John Sugar. You to know him is to love him. Now we open up the scene, um, the episode one where John is on a mission in Tokyo, right? And we see him interrogating a man and asking about the whereabouts of a young boy, right? Um, Apparently, he is a private investigator and he finds lost things, lost people, okay? And so he's looking for the boy and immediately we're we're kind of gripped in. It's black and white, so definitely giving noir vibes. And there's narration. Of course, he's giving the narration. Um, I love it when we have a protagonist who is... um, not only good, right, but nuanced and and has a past. And you definitely get that impression from him. And so immediately he's in this struggle with the man and he's like, I don't want to hurt you. I hate hurting people. So a private investigator who has an aversion to violence, but will need it when necessary. He finds the little boy and he skedaddles back home. We find out um, upon his arrival there that he speaks all these languages, honey. The driver was speaking Arabic and he understood and actually gave the driver the name to his doctor because the driver's son was sick. He overheard the conversation. He gets dropped off and has his bags delivered to his hotel where he lives, but he's dropped off to Ruby, who's played by Kirby, and she is basically his manager, okay? She books the jobs. Any prospective clients are supposed to go through her. But immediately upon greeting and saying their hello, she's like, what happened? Because who's Mr. Siegel and why did he reach out to you directly? It's disrespectful because I run this, okay? (laughs) And so he's basically like, you know, I am enthralled by the case. Um, Immediately when he starts describing his granddaughter, Olivia, I think of Jen. We don't know who Jen is yet, you guys, but it's soon to come. And so they're chatting uh, and he's like, I'm going to take the case. She's like, you need to rest. He has an injury. We see immediately he may be struggling with some sort of underlying condition because his hand is, you know, cramping sporadically throughout the entire episode. And so, you know, they're talking, but let's go back to the conversation with Siegel. So they flash back and we see John talking to Mr. Siegel um, and I will insert the actor's name here okay in a picture of him and basically he's like my granddaughter's missing she did have a previous drug problem but now she's clean and she has the whole world ahead of her okay and so of course he takes the case and let's start the mission let's figure out who she is where she is, what's going on. And so Mr. Siegel, by the way, is a big time movie producer. And apparently John Sugar is a movie buff, which I love that about him. He's obsessed with Glenn Ford. He loves the old murder mystery. It, it, like I said, this this is definitely given bogey. OK, and in the right way. OK, in the right way. Um, let's see. The brother. So we basically his first stop is to Olivia's apartment, right? Because what's going on? And so he goes in and the front desk is basically like her car has been parked here for a week. And they're like, how do you know? Uh, and he says because of the um, the key card, the fob that gets you in and out of the gate. So she hasn't been there. And so immediately John is like, OK, that's interesting. Let's go to the apartment, honey. Well, when they go to the apartment. He goes into a blicky being pointed at him. So the brother is in the apartment. And so I don't know if it's the brother's man, his friend, his bodyguard. I don't know who that man is. Okay. And so John's like, yeah, you know, but why are you here? And how did you get here? My dad, he let me as a key. He let me in. Okay. Why does your dad have a key? Not making sense. And the brother takes this moment to stress the fact that he and Olivia are only half siblings, but that the dad sent him over to check and see if Olivia was there, if she had come home and what the deal, because, you know, it feels like 
it feels like she's might be the black sheep of the family. So Sugar's there and he discovers that her mom was an actress and Olivia was following in her footsteps. Uh, you know, and we're moving on down the road. So the next place we have to go is this bar to meet a woman named Melanie. Now, as he's walking up, again, John being John, she seems he sees an unhoused man that's on the on the street with his dog, and immediately his heart goes out to him. But he's like, "Hey, can you watch this car because the baby?" John's car is giving all of the things. Like I said, you feel like you're transported to a bygone era, but it's present day. I don't know how to describe it, but the way that they're telling the story, the cinematography on its own tells a story. I listen as of right now, as of episode one, I have only good things to say. Okay. At this point. And so we go into the bar after he promises the guy a hundred now, a hundred up on leaving. You know, if anybody touches my car, here's a burner phone, call me. Okay. So he goes in and immediately he sees Melanie there at the bar. And this is the one, and I'll put her, her real name here. But honey, if you watch the office, it's Michael Scott's wife. And I didn't like her in the office and I don't like her here, but baby, listen, it's time to drink. And so she dry drinks this drink. I guess that's a hundred dollars a shot. And honey, she's taking him back. He wants to buy her a drink and the bartenders. Like she doesn't let anyone buy her a drink. Well, honey, she wanted John to buy her a drink. They sit, they talk. She's like, you know, you're not skeezy, you know, whatever. And so he's like, let me take you home. As they leave the same homeless guys out there with his dog. And John is like, listen, take, keep the phone you know, get a safe, decent, clean place to sleep tonight. Do you have any family? I have a sister in Minnesota. He says, fine. In the morning, call your sister. Let her know what happened. Don't be prideful. It's not about your pride. You don't deserve to be out here. Uh, and if she answers, I'll send you a ticket. He says, what about my dog? I'll get the dog a ticket too. We'll get him on the plane. No issue. So now he drives Melanie home, honey. And Melanie wants him to get in them draws. And Colin's like, you're drunk. And and I know it's not just that, honey. He don't want you, girl. John don't want you, Melanie. And I don't know what information we really gleaned from her. The conversation was seemingly uh, innocuous, right? Like she tries to assess him, tells him about his sign, who he's compatible with, the type of man he is. And I was like, girl, please, you know, that could be anybody you're describing. But I was, it was really, yeah, girl, he don't want you. And so he drops him off. Uh, and when he gets back to um, the apartment, Olivia's apartment, he goes to her car trunk, honey, and there's a body in there. He does the scans, takes the pictures. We don't know who this man is. Sorry to this man. Who is this man? And so John gets the fingerprints, the face. He's going to do facial recognition, I'm sure, to locate who this body is. Because he says in the narration, listen, if he found this one, Olivia might not be too far behind. Right. And we we want her alive. Um, when he gets back to the hotel, you know, he sets up his little space. He gets a knock on the door and there's a mysterious invitation to a party. And it's like, is he going to go back now? This is the part where everything gets interesting. Right. So we're at the end of the episode and he glitches. I don't know if John is having flashbacks. I don't know if he's having fast forwards. I don't know what's up with the injection in the neck. Is it a sleep aid? Is it something worse? You guys drop it in the comments below. What did you think of sugar? I am completely here for it. Definitely going to be added to the weekly rotation. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys like it. You guys, that's all for today. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.